What up, everybody? John the Morgyle here. Going to do a uh, flat Earth video for you. Hope you enjoy it. As we all well know, uh, water is the most abundant resource upon the world, uh, constituting over two thirds of the world's known surface. Uh, standing water is the best natural level, which will always find equilibrium by filling its given container evenly and level upon the surface. Uh, any topography beneath the level surface of the water will never affect the shape of the water surface, and the surface will always remain perfectly level so long as the body of water is at rest and at equilibrium. Now, should that container full of water be breached, allowing the water to flow into some other container, uh, the body of fluid will flow yet again, uh, to spread evenly across the bottom of that second container, finding a point of equilibrium, exhibiting yet again a level surface once it is at rest. Flowing waters do not exhibit the same uh, traits as standing water at equilibrium. So like rivers all have one thing in common, uh, they begin flowing from a genesis point that is some degree higher in elevation than the place where the flowing water eventually ends up, usually the ocean. The natural process described as fluid dynamics allows large amounts of water to naturally flow from inland higher elevations, springs or aquifers, uh, then responding to the natural law of what goes up must come down, uh, since the water is of a higher density than the air. Um, flowing waters are simultaneously pulled from the lower point or the end point to flow from higher elevations down to lower elevations. Um, open waters simply do not flow uphill, but will always begin at a higher elevation flowing down to a relatively lower elevation. Um, if the earth were a sphere, how exactly would fluid dynamics allow for such a natural phenomenon as rivers flowing down to the sea? We're told that since the Earth is a sphere, any observer will be at the hypothetical top of that sphere according to their vantage point, and only according to their vantage point, as everyone else in all directions will progressively become lower and lower proportionally with distance on that sphere Earth. Of course, each of those observers will believe they themselves to be on the top of the ball, and the theory of gravity is always pulling everything directly towards the center of the Earth, and because of this, every observer is allowed to experience themselves as upon the top of the ball. This is a major problem for the ball Earth theory, as fluid dynamics will not allow flowing water to operate under such conditions. Let's look at it this way. If we imagine the low point or the end point where the river empties into, say the ocean, uh, from that point, the origin point of the river is necessarily lower in altitude relative to the end point at the top of the ball. So how is it possible for water comprising the flowing river to flow uphill? The globe earther will claim that elevation is merely relative to the mean curve of the earth yet no evidence can be provided to support the claim that the Earth actually has any curvature, and actually all evidence proves that the Earth has no curvature. So gravity provides a sort of get-out-of-logic-free card to the ball Earth supporter. Gravity around the ball is a equalizing force which magically allows the ball Earth to behave as if it is actually a planar surface. Um, for one thing, this is amazing and amusing at once, for when have we ever seen an inanimate spherical object to present itself deceptively as a plane? Uh, how many inanimate objects in nature are so very wily and deliberately misleading as the ball earth? In order for rivers to flow down to the ocean on this ball, um, certain conditions must be present, and, and frankly, a hypothetical ball, Earth, does not meet those conditions. Uh, if the genesis point of a given river is considered as the base reference point on a ball, Earth, then the observable phenomenon of a flowing river makes some degree of logical sense, as the genesis point is higher than all other points. 
Um, on the other hand, if you consider the midpoint or, or the end point of the river as the base reference frame, then the ball earth theory falls apart as it does not physically allow for rivers flowing to the sea from a relatively higher point. In the case where we consider the halfway point of the river as the base reference frame or the top of the world, then the water coming from the genesis point must flow uphill to reach that midway point, defying rule numero uno of the fluid dynamics, which dictates again that water will never flow uphill. The water at the lower point would need to first completely fill that container, as in like if you dam up a river and then spill over that higher obstacle once the water level has sufficiently risen to bleed over that point. But you're never going to see water like flowing up and over a dam. Um, I suppose globe earthers will argue fluids in enclosed tubes to combat this point, so it, it's, I suppose, necessary to preemptively debunk this argument to save us all time and aggravation on a follow-up video. So if you have some sort of a tube, let's say a garden hose, it is possible to create a situation where water will flow uphill, but only within the pressurized environment of that tube. So if you have, say, a waterbed sitting at an elevation of three foot, um, you can connect a garden hose to a spigot and the other end of the hose placed in the waterbed, then open the uh, valve on the spigot to allow water to fill the hose completely, then disconnect the, the hose from the spigot and uh, water will begin to flow from the waterbed through the hose out to the ground. Now as long as the end of that hose uh, removed from the spigot remains at a lower level than the waterbed, uh, water will continue to flow from the bed until the water is completely drained uh, with no need for pumps or anything. Now, so you can indeed manipulate the hose lower than the uh, water source level so that the water travels up and downhill within that hose. Uh, again, so long as the uh, bottom end of the hose remains at a lower level than the source. Um, the only reason this works is because the hose is providing a sealed container for the water inside to fill and the low pressure atmosphere at the end of the hose behaves essentially as a vacuum providing the force necessary to suck the water out of the hose uh, perpetually with no need for a pump. This same principle is why water towers are always at a higher elevation than the recipients of the water. Now, within the system coming, you know, the tubes coming from the uh, water tower, uh, plumbing pipes may travel up and downhill with water, so long as the pipes uh, end at a point where the spigots are at a lower level than the water tower. So, you, you're never going to have, uh, you know, water delivered from a water tower on the base of a mountain up the mountain to the, you know, top of the mountain unless there are pumps involved. Now, rivers, it goes without saying, but rivers are different than pipes because they are open bodies of water which do not provide a complete 360 degree sealed container for the water to fill and pressurize. Um, if a river is dammed up, the water will back up and begin backfilling the area upriver from the dam and will only spill over top of the dam once the area upriver is completely backfilled with water to a level higher than the dam. Uh, but again, you're never going to see water flowing down river, meeting with the dam, and then flowing uphill over the dam. That's not how it works. Um, so there is a big difference between a river and a hose pipe. Uh, at the end of the day, if the world were actually a ball, there would just be plenty of evidence to support things like geological curvature, uh, as well as the mind-boggling motion, rotation, and orbit of the Earth, yet no such evidence exists for either. Uh, the fact that rivers behave in the way which they do completely debunks the notion that the world is a ball. So this is just another uh, piece of evidence to add to the preponderance of evidence, which uh, completely points to a flat and motionless Earth and is in complete contrast to a spherical world. So with that, I'll wrap this one up. I hope you enjoyed.
as you know, this channel is viewer supported. So I wanted to thank everyone that has uh, helped out the channel with contributions. Um, it really is needed. So if you would like to help me continue making videos, feel free to make a one-time contribution to PayPal at www.paypal.me slash the or a monthly contribution for as little as a buck a month to Patreon at www.patreon.com slash the So again, thanks so much for watching. God bless y'all and spread the word, spread the world and peace out everybody. Shake, make the earth shake.